Alright guys, usually for my recommendations video, I'll show you two series that I like and two series that I dropped from my collection, but this month I have nothing that I didn't enjoy, so instead I'm going to recommend three different series that I really like this month, starting off with 20th Century Boys from the author who also created popular works such as Pluto and Monster. 20th Century Boys is a story about an adult group of friends who discover that their old childhood plans to destroy the world are being recreated by a mysterious person from their past simply called Friend. They must work together in order to save the world from friend and his huge cult following that he has created over the past years. The story is incredible with its world building, although you primarily follow the main characters who are the Endo family, the author does a great job flushing out the personalities and the actions of all the childhood friends to make the world feel more alive and real. This series also has a ton of mysteries surrounding the different characters and the events that happen because the timeline moves from the present back to the childhood, often giving the reader more clues on who the villain is. This series is complete at 22 volumes long and Viz just released the last Omnibus volume so you can now buy the entire story. An Omnibus volume has two volumes in the same book, meaning three Omnibus volumes I have here have six of the 22 volumes in the series. If you had the option of buying the normal volumes or the Omnibus editions, I would definitely pick the Omnibus since they are a little bit bigger so you get to see more of the artwork and I would say the Omnibus editions also look much better on your shelves. They have a colorful text showing the title along with a red background where when you have all the volumes it shows a subtle picture of an eye that is very significant in the story. I picked up these three Omnibus volumes of 20th Century Boys as a way to see if I would like the story and it did not disappoint. I definitely will be picking up the rest of these series in the future hauls so I suggest that you should do the same and read along with me. The next series I really enjoyed this month was Boarding School Juliet which basically is another the retelling of the traditional tale of Romeo and Juliet. The two main characters are enrolled in a boarding school where they are divided by the black doggies with Romeo as a leader and the white cats with Juliet as a leader. They are both in a secret relationship that they must hide from other students in order to maintain peace between the two factions and you follow their love story as they strive to change the traditional worldview. I was first introduced to this story through the anime adaptation where I admittedly did not enjoy the first three or so episodes but that was because my view of the series was different than how it should have been. Once I watched the fourth and fifth episode, I started to understand that this series is more of a romantic comedy with the drum being very light and used very well to progress the story. I felt that once I started to take the series a little less seriously and read it for the romance and the comedy, Boarding School Juliet felt like a much more enjoyable series. You will really like the two main characters as they are both very strong-willed characters willing to do anything for their love for each other, supported by a cast of side characters who kind of fall into traditional anime stereotypes but are still great to have in the story. Although I said I took the series a little less seriously, there are moments of drama that really push the story along since this is a story about two people fighting for their love. There is a good amount of conflict and I think it's mixed well with the romance and the comedy. I currently have 6 volumes of this 16 complete volume series and I plan on collecting the rest in future hauls. The manga is the size of a traditional viz or shonen jump series and I think that the white spines with the title and cursive make a really elegant looking manga for your bookshelf. If you don't want to start off by buying the physical manga, I do recommend the anime as it does a very faithful adaptation of the first 4.5 volumes. Volumes. The last series I want to recommend is a series from the famous author of Goodnight Poon Poon and Soladin and the series is called Dead Dead Demons D -D 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 Destruction. The story follows a group of high school girls who live in a world where three years ago a group of invaders came in a giant alien ship that still looms over Tokyo. This event caused the world to go crazy and the Japanese government started to mass produce weapons capable of fighting these invaders. That day, three years ago, everything changed. But at the same time, nothing has really changed as our main characters are still going to school, playing with their friends, and doing what any carefree high school girls would do. This manga tackles what it truly means to grow up and be an adult, living in a world where adults seem to be demons who only deceive and destroy. You'll learn that the true threat to humanity is not the invaders, but humanity itself. Simply put, this story is amazing. If you liked any of Ennio Sato's previous works, this is a must-have for your shelf. I would currently say that this has the potential of being greater than Goodnight Poon Poon depending on how the story will end. For now, the story is an amazing read and has a classic, introspective, Ennio Sato style that makes you happy, depressed, and question your own life. There's currently only 9 published out of the 10 of this ongoing series and I'm not sure how many volumes this will go but it feels like the story is getting close to the end. The physical volumes are a little bigger than the normal Viz volumes which I think is nice because it lets you view more of the amazing artwork in the series. The covers all showcase one of the characters which wraps around the entire volume 
volume, leaving the spines with a unique look that is really similar to the spines and covers of the Love is War volumes. Overall, I really like this series and how emotional and thought-provoking it is for a manga series, and I would highly recommend it to anyone who is an Inio Osado fan or looking to get into his works. That's it for this month's recommendations video. I'm actually going to go see the new Demon Slayer movie right now, so I'm going to do a little mini vlog and post it, at least by the end of the weekend, Monday at the latest, so expect that. Other than that, that's it for this video. Bye-bye.